Just wanted to give you a brief rundown of how you can um, do lab number four, ADD converters with serial port output and plotting uh, without the uh, audio shield. Uh, we can do this in simulation. Uh, what I've got here is a, um, a potentiometer, also known as a pot. You can see the potentiometer uh, off to the right here. It's a basic component with a wiper. And what it does is it takes this uh, tap analog input zero from the center, and it uses its uh, little wiper as a voltage divider to go between ground and five volts. As it does that on a 10-bit input, you get two to the 10 or 1,024 different possible inputs to the ADD converter, which you can convert into a uh, integer that ranges from 0 to 123. Uh, what we do here is we um, let's take a look at the code. We use a serial output um, and uh, we're able to um, I'll just comment some stuff out here. We're able to uh, input from the analog to digital converter input 0 using analog read. So if you look at it, it says A0, so that's what um, analog read of 0 does. That gives me a, a, a value, right, which is going to range from uh, 0 to 1,023. And I'm going to divide that by 100. And so that will be equal to a value that ranges from 0 to... 10.23. So that's the range. Then we go in over here and we say uh, let's multiply it by 0.01. All right, so um, if we look at it that way, um, V times 0.01 is going to now be equal to a range that goes from 0 to um, I'll say um, 0 0.1023 or maybe we should say 0 0.1023 so we don't confuse it too much. So in other words we can go to a tenth as an increment, a tenth of a radian right, as the increment. And um, hmm, let's see now. Uh, One-tenth of a radian. I don't know what that is in degrees. I think you have to um, multiply by 180 divided by pi or something like this. So what is that, 18 degrees or something? I forget how to do that. The radians to degrees is, uh, yeah, you multiply by 180 divided by pi. So the pi part goes out, and then you have 180 times um, 0.1, so that gives you like 18 degrees. That's a tenth of a radian. And so uh, that'll be used as the increment for theta uh, at maximum. And um, minimum will be a zero um, value. In other words, you won't, you won't be incrementing theta at all. And uh, theta will keep going until it gets to... Um, two times whatever this number is, let's call it pi. Uh, as a matter of fact, it makes more sense to actually use the term pi. And then, uh, if you like, you can define pi, um, perhaps something like this. Um, pi, it's uppercase, equals, what is pi equal? 3.14159265535. Something like this. And so, um, ooh, and you need a semicolon. So now we've got pi in there, 2 times pi. In fact, we could even call this, since we're doing the computation all the time, let's call it um, pi two, just so that we don't have to do the computation of multiplying by two. So pi two. There. Saves us a little multiply. Then we take the uh, sign um, and um, probably want to throw in a delay in here if you're going to do this with real hardware. 
uh, delay of uh, 50 uh, milliseconds. If you're not going to use real hardware, it kind of doesn't matter. And if you're going to use the serial plotter, you got to close it if you want to open up the serial monitor. So let's take a look and see what happens here. So we'll get the serial monitor open. And uh, I think there should be a plotter in there. Oh, yes, there's the plotter. You can open both in um, the simulator, but you can only open one of them in the real hardware because that causes what you call a serial port contention issue. Uh, so let's start the uh, simulation. Seems to be working. Let's um, stop the simulation and move the hardware over. <clears throat> the hardware, it's in the way. I wonder if you can just take the whole thing and I wish you could take the whole thing and just shove it over. Oh, you can. Okay, let's do that. Stop it. There. Got to hit escape to stop that. So now let's start the simulation. Open up the code. And, oh, this is still moving. Ah. It won't stop moving. This is fun. All right, we're going to get this pot and we're going to move it over. I think I'll just shove it over here so it's not in the way of the code, even though that looks ugly. And then we'll go over in here and we'll start the simulation. We'll open up the code. We'll run the pot down to zero and we can see it's changing values. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our little... Um, There comes the sine wave. And if you uh, reduce the increment, you should change the... What you want to do with this? This is going too slow. Stop the simulation, and for the sake of simulation, get rid of this delay. There you go. Now let's run it again. starting to see a sine wave here. Let's increase the frequency a little bit. And that looks like it's got a slightly shorter wavelength, which is just what I wanted. And now what we're going to do is we're going to stop the simulation and we're going to square off the um, sine wave. We're going to say if d is less than zero, d equals minus one, otherwise d equals plus one, and now we can see, aha, that looks an awful lot like a square wave. So we've squared off the sine wave. Now we're going to reduce d, and that lengthens the duration of the square wave. Let's see if that works. And sure enough, we can see the square wave is changing in frequency. And that's it. So basically, for this lab, you would use both the sine wave and the square wave and show the two different kinds of code that you've got. And that basically is the lab. It gives you a little output, uh, shows you how to do uh, some input, you can do some plotting. And um, it was supposed to be a very short, very easy lab. But interestingly enough, some people got really stuck with this one, so I was kind of glad we didn't ask too much of you during the, um, during the lab session. 
And that's what we've got. So hope you like my little demo. Talk to you later. Bye.